Indie Mogul. This week on Indie News, I'm excited for Spider-Man, a moguler uses my over-the-shoulder rig in this crazy race, why YouTube videos get stuck at 301 views, a robotic camera operator, and I take you behind the scenes as I produce this show. Hey, Indie Mogulers, are you excited? Because I'm excited. Tomorrow, The Amazing Spider-Man hits theaters in the U.S., and I'm happy to see that it's earned a decent score on Rotten Tomatoes. So tell me, what movie this summer has you most excited? For me, I think it's probably The Dark Knight Rises. I'm also excited for this Wednesday, Independence Day, for the premiere of awesome director Chris Crutchfield's music video. I love it when other mogulers replicate my DIY projects and shoot awesome things like YouTube user Frozen Shield, who built my over-the-shoulder camera rig and wore it during the Tough Mudder race. You may have seen my Warrior Dash video, but the Tough Mudder is a much harder, crazier race, and I appreciate him sharing his great video. Last week, Numberphile released a cool video explaining why YouTube videos freeze at 301 views. I was always curious about that, and after watching this, now I get it. Here's a video that's been around for a couple months, but a friend just sent it to me this week. It's a complex and expensive DIY project, but so cool. Arthur Waite won the Microsoft Robotics at Home competition with the Smart Tripod, a robotic dolly that uses a Kinect to track human movements. It's not yet as good as a human camera operator, but the potential is really interesting. It's been four months since I started this show, Indie News. That's 19 episodes now, which are all nicely organized in this playlist right here. I've answered your questions, built DIY projects, showed you the video gear I use, but today I want to take you into the making of this show. Much like the KFC Cheese Top Burger, I want to take the inner workings of the show and put them proudly on display. So here's how it all goes down. After I've identified newsworthy material and a topic for the main segment, I write the script. Then I highlight the portions which need to be read on camera, like this shot right now. This limits how much I actually need to memorize because I can just stop and cut away to some b-roll. But why do I memorize when I have a DIY teleprompter? Well, as long as there are plenty of cuts, I can actually shoot faster without it. And it's easy to become a zombie when reading from a teleprompter. I also mark up the script to develop a shot list, and after I capture all that b-roll, I turn my office into a mini studio using my DIY light and a little sun. I mount my camera just a little higher than my head, which lets me place the shotgun microphone about a foot from my mouth without actually being in the shot. I connect a small LCD so I can see myself, and I use a remote to autofocus the lens. Before I had the remote, I would use some string and tape to stand in while I focused. In the background, I full screen the Indie Mogul logo, and I use a Mac plugin called Caffeine to make sure my screen stays on during the shoot. After I finish the on camera segments, it's important that I stay in the same position for voiceover. If I change the environment, the mic distance, or even if my mood changes, the audio can sound dramatically different. Because I record video on my camera and mic audio on a portable recorder, I import the files, then use the synchronize function in Final Cut Pro 10, which is amazing. Here I can see the synced clips and make adjustments. Sometimes, because the microphone track is mono, Final Cut will assign it to the left channel only, so I can switch it from stereo to dual mono. I also don't need the in-camera audio, so I'll turn that down, boost the mic audio, and add a compressor filter which helps the volume stay more uniform. Before I start making cuts, this is also a good time to color correct the video image. I usually increase the contrast and saturation slightly, and drop the yellow a little bit. Because there's a standard format to the show, I have one project that I use each week as a template. It already has the intro, music, and graphics that I'll need. When I developed this box graphic, I thought it was interesting that it has one slanted edge, but that poses a challenge. I can scale an image down and crop the top and bottom, but how do I create the angled edge? I use an 8-point mask plugin by Alex Gullner, but this process was time-consuming for every new graphic I made. Then, I discovered that many problems in Final Cut Pro 10 can be solved using compound clips. You can select multiple items and turn them into one editable clip. I use this a lot with music, like here, where I can easily add an extra loop to lengthen the track, 
but it's still one item in my timeline. So for this box graphic, I set up a compound clip. Inside is my standard graphic underneath another compound clip that will house the image. Rather than repeatedly cropping and masking each image, I can do it once to this compound clip, and whatever I put inside will always stay within those boundaries. Inside I have a white background and another copy of the background graphic. These are here to help guide me as I scale the image, and I can press V to turn them off when I'm done. After I backtrack out of both compound clips, the image looks exactly how I want it, and it acts as a single graphic, which is much simpler to duplicate and modify. Now I'll edit all of my on-camera clips and voiceover and layer graphics and b-roll on top. Whatever editing software you use, you can probably speed up your workflow by learning the keyboard shortcuts. Most editing platforms use I and O to set in and out points, and J, K, and L to control playback. I also use the spacebar to start and stop playback. Here are some Final Cut Pro 10 specific commands that I use a lot. W to insert a clip into the timeline, Command B to make a cut, Shift Z to see the entire timeline, Command T to add a dissolve, Command Option V to paste effects from one clip to another, and up and down to jump between edit points in the timeline. Much of the b-roll I use comes from YouTube videos, so I use a website called keepvid.com where I plug in the video URL and download an mp4 file. I edit the show in 720p 23.98 frames per second. I usually shoot in 1080, but editing in 720 gives me the flexibility to blow up and reframe the image if I want. Editing in a smaller frame size and lower frame rate also keeps the file size small, meaning I can export quickly and get the file online fast. I upload episodes as private videos, but after I add annotations, links in the description, and a custom thumbnail, I set the video to public and let those sweet, sweet views and comments roll in. You know what? You can forget all of those editing tips I just shared. There's a new application called the Edit Button, developed by the good people at Grog Movies. Simply tell it what you want it to do, and click Edit. Okay, it's a joke. That comedic video rounds out our playlist today, a playlist that begins with Frozen Shield's Over the Shoulder video, Number Files' explanation of 301 views, and the Smart Tripod demo. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again Wednesday for the premiere of Chris Crutchfield's music video, All Out War. See ya.